weren't expecting me today, were you? So, so there I am, finally watching the Schneider Cut, which, which I was waiting for for four years, and then I get this tweet from the official Evo Twitter page, and for those who don't know what Evo is, it's the biggest FGC tournament ever, that's being held, that's held every year, but sadly, it was canceled, was supposed to go online, but due to a mishap with allegations, it had to be canceled, and they had to make changes going forward for um, the FGC, but now we have a new message um, because we haven't gotten any news about happening for EVO, so let's read the message real quick. EVO would not be possible without the collective passion and collaboration of the fighting game community and we're deeply grateful for your dedication over the past 25 years. We know last year was challenging due to the pandemic and the circumstances surrounding the cancellation of EVO Online, involving a former team member who has been completely separated from our company. We want to reaffirm that harassment or abuse of any kind has no place within EVO or any of our future events, and we're taking every precaution to make sure members of our community will always be treated with the respect, dignity, and decency you deserve. In order to deliver on the trust you have all put on EVO, we realize that we need an experienced strategic partner who truly respects the spirit of the FGC. This is why we're excited to announce that EVO has become part of the joint partnership of Sony Interactive Entertainment and RTS. So now Sony controls Evo in its entirety, but I'm actually I'm actually crazy surprised by, by this a lot, especially since like I wasn't sure how Evo was gonna happen going forward. But also Sony making this um joining up with them, especially since they already do a lot of fighting game tournaments with like ESL of course, because they do the Mortal Kombat tournaments, um, Street Fighter tournaments and I'm not sure if they do Tekken 7 tournaments, but my point is that they do a lot of tournaments already, but I'm glad they are supporting EVO, of course, in its entirety. So then shortly after, PlayStation tweets, and of course EVO retweets it, with this new message, which does talk about the lineup right here for EVO Online kicking off this August. With the support of world-class publishers, EVO is returning this year as EVO Online, so yes, it's still an online tournament. A fully online competition taking place August 6th through 8th and 13th and 15th. Entry will be free, which is good, and players in North America, Europe, Asia, and Latin America will be able to compete in Bandai Namco Entertainment's Tekken 7. Capcom Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition, Warner Bros. Games, Mortal Kombat 11, and finally, Arc System Works Guilty Gear Strive in an open format. The online qualifiers will be live streamed for fans, and more details will be shared in the coming weeks on evo.gg. And then you have this like little message right here saying Mortal Kombat 11 will only operate in North America, Europe, and Latin America regions since, uh, so yes, it's back, and it looks like it's getting better than ever, but I can't say that about the bit of the lineup. Before EVO Online, like even before like the 2020, um, EVO, tw EVO normally had like a massive lineup, which was right here. Let me just move my face right here. Yeah, as you can see, this was the lineup, because this was going to be a major lineup. First you had Undernight and Birth, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Dragon Ball Fighters, Tekken 7, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is supposed to be a invitational tournament to celebrate the 20 years of Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition, Soul Calibur... But now, only two out of those nine fighting games are going to be the only ones that are going to be played at EVO. What does hurt about the what does of course hurt about this lineup is how much those other games are not going to be in the title because like a lot of people of course love those games. 
and would love to see him at EVO because a lot of people loved Dragmo Fighters um, last year at EVO. They loved Under Night of Birth. Um, there were some people that loved Bla Blaze Blue Cross Tag that never got a, a 3.0 with Blaze Blue, everybody. And Samurai Showdown just started and now it's on Season 3. And yet that's not going to have any more attention for PlayStation unless they get an update for it um, for the lineup. And then there's also Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. That, oh my god. Grand Blue was probably the hardest game to focus on because that was one of the newest fighting games in 2020 that I'm not sure it got much attention, especially when COVID started because the game released in the US and Japan at like February and March like at the start of COVID and everyone had to like primarily play online and no one was gonna play online because the the servers were awful it, it, it was it's always awful it's the generals and then there were three other games that were also making a comeback in EVO online which were Killer Instinct, Them's Fighting Hurts, and Skullgirls, which was finally an EVO title. I barely play either of the other three, but I I do know the Skullgirls and them Fine Hearts community is like growing strong, of course, and it always has been. Uh, they were supposed to even get a chance that last year, but now they aren't, which which does suck very badly. And then, of course. There's also Smash Brothers, which, that was cut twice. That was cut for online, and then it was also cut for um, Evo again for this year, it looks like. Especially, when I was just learning about Evo, I just learned about, like, the big core games that everyone paid attention to at Evo, which were Street Fighter. Marvel vs. Capcom, and then Smash. And I saw how Marvel MVC um, star was like the biggest game from like 2000 all the way to 2010, and then Smash was the big, the big game for 2014 going into like 2019, and of course Street Fighter with the 2000s and 2016 and other years and other dates I can't think of. In terms of viewership, losing Smash is a major one, but it's a hard one to fit in because of Sony and of course Nintendo, and yet Nintendo doesn't like help when it comes to the um, their eSports of course, because we've already um, seen what they've done, cease and desist, and um, shutting down to other tournaments, of course, but, yeah. Overall, I am very excited to, tr um, to be participating for these events going forward, because I've always wanted to compete in EVO, um, but now I, you get the chance to, since it's online now, and I'm definitely looking forward to be playing MK11 Ultimate at EVO, and Guilty Gear Strive, which will finally launch in June, hopefully no other delays. And that should be really good, because I am definitely using that fight stick right there. You see that fight stick? That's going to be ready for when I play Strive, for my Potemkin. And I'm wrecking everybody. <sighs> That's going to be it for my uh, thoughts and discussion for for this video. I wanted to like get my thoughts out for, um, for this announcement for EVO, because I enjoyed watching the FGC, watch, playing all these fighting games, and wanted to get my overall thoughts out about um, the changes being made for EVO. So, thank you guys for watching, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later. Okay. Okay, wow. Okay, wow, that... I, I should probably do a new outro.